Mr. Dash. And uh, if you know who I am or what I do, you'll know that this isn't one of my barbecue cookers or one of my grills. So on YouTube primarily, I do a lot of barbecue. If you want to see something barbecue or barbecue business related, feel free to check out that card over there. But if you need to change the brakes on a Chrysler Pacifica, this is your video. Now, before you get into deep to this, if you haven't already bought your parts, I'm going to link a kit that I got off of Amazon. The kit off of Amazon was a hundred bucks. Yes, 100 bucks for the entire kit. Both rotors, both sets of pads, some brake fluid, as well as brake clean. Now, I won't need the brake fluid. You can see, I don't even have the hood up. If you do a decent enough job, you won't have to use the brake fluid. And the brake clean all come included for $100. When I went to look for these particular parts from Advanced Auto Parts, the front rotors were $100 a piece. And that was before, before I even bought the pads. So save yourself some money. Look for your specific vehicle, make, model, year, obviously. On Amazon, again, the kit that I used for my 2017 Chrysler Pacifica Limited with the big wheels, the 20 inch um, wheels, and the 330 millimeter rotor will be linked in the description below. So use that link. Find yourself the right kit, save yourself some money. Thank me in the comments below. All right, so I have already done the driver's side and I came over on the passenger side. So let me just show you, I'm gonna walk you through a time lapse of me doing the driver's side. So first thing I did was get the, the van jacked up. After I got the van jacked up, the next thing I did was get the uh, lug nuts broken loose. And to get the lug nuts broken loose, you're going to need your wheel lock if you are, your vehicle is so quick and a 19 millimeter socket. I Use impact tools. If you have impact, if you have impact tools, you can use them. If you don't have impact tools, hand tools will work. They'll just be a little bit more work. So, 19 mil to take off the lug, lug nuts. Once you have the lug nuts off, the next thing you're going to have to do is take off the caliper. The caliper uses a 13 millimeter socket. Just a regular 3 8 13 millimeter socket. Just keep in mind the direction and the orientation, righty tighty, lefty loosey, but the bolt will most likely be on the back side. Well, not most likely, the bolt will be on the back side of the caliper and rotor. So you're gonna have to uh, make sure you have the correct orientation so you're not tightening the bolt when you need to take, you need to loosen the bolt. Once you have your uh, caliper off you just move it out of the way all right one thing and I apologize I am very sweaty it's over 90 degrees uh, and I'm doing this one of the things I forgot to mention was take the caliper and use a zip tie to hold it up out of the way It'll make things a lot easier when you get to the point where you are removing the caliper bracket and everything like that. And then the next thing you have to do is you're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket to get the caliper bracket bolts off. All right, here's the back side of the caliper bracket. These are the 21, this is the one, and this is the other. 21 millimeter bolt. Once you take the caliper bracket bolts off, the next thing you're going to do is to get the rotor off. I can tell you, you are going to need a BFH. If you do not know what a BFH is, it's a big freaking hammer, okay? And 
you can see how long it took me to get the rotor off of the driver's side. Here. <laughs> just knock it off it took me a little while so the, there is nothing holding that rotor on and if you plan to replace it grow a pair hit it harder if you still can't get it off swing it harder trust me just hit it harder you're going to see a lot of rust and debris and other things like that coming off of this off of the rotor hit it around the outside of the uh, outside of the well, excuse me, inside where the wheel sits against the rotor and then also hit it on the outside, it will come free. There is nothing holding it on aside from the pressure from the lug nut. That's it. Once you get the rotor off, next thing you need to do is to replace your rotor. How you're gonna replace your rotor? Take it out of the bag, slap the new one on. Before you slap the new one on, what I would highly recommend is you take some brake clean and clean the back side of the rotor. Keep a, you know, be mindful of what you touch. Put that rotor on these studs and then go ahead and take one of the lug nuts and put it on the rotor to hold it still. You'll thank me. You'll, so you won't have to fight with it once you start putting everything else back together. Once you get your rotor put back on, the next thing you're gonna to have to do is reverse the steps. So the first thing you have to do is get your caliper bracket put back on. So you're gonna need your 21 millimeter uh, socket and the 21 millimeter bolts. Once you get those set and started and then finished put, getting them put on, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is get your brake pads. Now, my brake pads, I will show you. The brake pads, here are the new brake pads. And let me show you the old ones. There was still a decent amount of life left in these old pads. This was the rear pad, this was the front pad. And you can see there was still a decent amount of life left and I hadn't even got to the wear bar where it starts squeaking. The problem was or is with, with my wife's van is the rotors are warped. And when you apply the brakes hard, you get that wobble in the steering wheel and you get that wobble when you're coming to a stop from a high speed. Now, when you install your brake pads, the way the brake pads were installed um, from the factory, the wear pins were at the top. The, the wear indicators were at the top. So just make sure you have the correct orientation. You'll see the curvature of the pad and this will be on the outside passenger side. This will be on the inside passenger side of the rotor. Just sandwich it up. Now when it comes to putting the pad into the caliper or yeah, into the caliper bracket, you have to like wedge it in there on the bottom and then wedge it in there on the top just be patient you will get it in there just just be patient it, it, it goes right back in in this kit there were some clips provided you can feel free to replace those clips i left those clips the way that they were i left them alone if it ain't broke don't fix it well before you get your pads on you're going to need to compress the caliper what i do to compress the caliper is what I do to compress the caliper is use a C-clamp and one of the old brake pads. Because they do sell or you can buy a 
a, a, a tool, a specific tool to spin back in or push in to compress the pistons on the brake caliper. But I've always, since I've been 16, I'm, I'm 40 now, have been doing and using a C-clamp. Now because there's, it's a dual piston, what ends up happening, you're gonna to have to move the C-clamp from side to side on the calip, on the brake pad to compress those pistons back in evenly. Do not over tighten, do not go berserk on the C-clamp. Nice even pressure, just screw it in if you have a C-clamp or, or, or you have a special brake tool. Once you compress the, the pistons back into the caliper, you'll then be able to fit that caliper over top of the new brake pads. Once you get the new brake pads in, You're then going to go ahead and put the caliper back together and use those 13, that 13 millimeter, those 13 millimeter bolts and put those back on. Now, when you tighten those 13 millimeter bolts, you are most likely, if you're taking these bolts off now, you're most likely gonna be the next person to take them off again. So keep that in mind and do not over tighten them or do not tighten them with the strength of the hole because you will be kicking yourself the next time you have to do brakes. Once you get that completed, you're done. All you have to do is put the wheel and tire back on. Get everything torqued back down. And you're good to go. Just keep in mind, when you get in the vehicle, when you get in the van, before you press the ignition, before you start it up, press that brake pedal until you get a hard feel, and then you're done. So, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was instructional. If you like this video, you'll probably like some of my barbecue videos. Yes, that's a shameless plug. And yes, I do normally do barbecue. And no, this is not barbecue related. I had to take care of this uh, maintenance on my wife's vehicle. I'm saving myself a bunch of money. And it's just costing me a little bit of time. You can do the same. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like what you saw today, if you learned something, please do me a favor and leave a comment down below. Also, leave a thumbs up, and again, please, I would enjoy it if you stuck around and watched some of my other barbecue-related videos. Anyway, thanks again. Have a great day.